Okay, so here we are leaving Sitges and uh, we're going to head up to, well we're going to head inland today and start making our way across Spain. Interesting uh, place. Sitges, quite a nice nice place. And definitely worth a visit again sometime. Maybe with the family. Got a lot of uh, nice little tapas bars and things like that. Um, around the town, really nice seafront. And uh, quite an expensive resort. You tend to get a lot of the Barcelona football players living here and commuting from here. It's about 30 minutes up to Barcelona. So yeah, I'll come back to you once we get out of the town and on our route. Okay, here we are on the uh, A1 through 2. Uh, we're at a campsite. Um, up in the Navarra mountains. That's where we camped last night on the only bit of not waterlogged ground um, because we had a big uh, big storm. But as you can see this morning it's uh, lovely and clear and uh, it was quite nice to camp underneath the, uh, the olive trees last night. Um, so we're all packed and um, we're just going to head out now up the A132 which will take us uh, north and then um, west towards Pamplona. Um, so we're just getting the bikes ready and uh, just head off. Um, the campsite last night was about uh, 10 euros each per night. And, uh, there was only us and a couple of other tents there. Um, so uh, very quiet. But um, all morning while we've been having breakfast, uh, we've noticed that there's uh, lots of motorcycles going up and down the road, so it must be a very popular route. And um, lots of uh, twisty roads. So, uh, yep, we'll come back to you soon.
Okay, so today uh, we just left our second night of camping on this trip and uh, look at the view, that's just spectacular. Beautiful spot, camped in on some olive groves last night, but uh, due to the height that we're at and the valley, uh, it was very cold during the night, down to 7 degrees. Uh, but today clear skies and um, onward today to Pamplona where they, they do the bull run in Spain. And I expect this road to be pretty spectacular. Um, it's, it's on a website called The Greatest Motorcycle Roads and Hearing this morning, there's, there's probably tens, twenties, thirties, or forties, maybe even hundred bikes gone up this road today. Just while we were sort of waking up this morning. Uh, it's quite a late start. It's 10:40 in the morning. Due to the cold night, uh, I wanted to wait for the sun to come up above these mountains and get a bit warmer before we head off. Uh, we've only got about 130k to do today, so uh, we should be there by about 2 or 3 o'clock, just taking it easy. Stop for a bit of lunch and breakfast on the way. Looks like a railway line up there. So I'll just take it easy on these first few bends and let this uh, crap off the tyres from the campsite and burn off. But uh, yeah, some spectacular roads that we're on today. So enjoy the view. There's the river down there that um, came straight past the campsite and they do a lot of um, whitewater rafting, uh, kayaking, that kind of thing from the campsite we're at. The average that we've paid so far is about 9 euros to 10 euros for camping for a tent each. And pretty much the, the really clean shower blocks and toilets, hot water, all the facilities you want. And a little tip, if you are camping in a tent, if you want uh, electricity to charge mobile phones, cameras, uh, Bluetooth headsets, that kind of thing, intercoms, um, then bring a, um, a normal adapter lead that will plug into, you know, like caravans plug into, with, um, you know, just a foot lead on it, with a normal adapter so you can plug your plugs in, because uh, they all offer it electricity hookups. Um, so you can get electricity wherever you are at the campsites too. That's the only downside of camping, if you haven't got all that then um, you run on flat batteries and stuff for days. The little solar charger that I bought um, will work to charge my Bluetooth headset up, but that's about all it'll charge. and then it's out of juice again so but it comes in handy as an emergency backup so I think tonight we're going to stay in a, a hotel in Pamplona um, somewhere I've always wanted to visit and get some tapas for tea
And if you do want to see this this valley that we're on, I'll, I'll post up the, the road name that we, we're actually on somewhere about here. And there's there's a rumour that they're gonna, or they're trying to to put a dam at the one end of it and actually flood the whole valley, which will be a shame. So if you want to see it, I would come soon. like there's another dam up here and a lake after it. I think this is the one that they want to extend down the valley to make it bigger. Yep. There's your dam. So it's good your butt didn't, uh, didn't collapse last night otherwise we'd been washed away. Nice place though. Look at this. Wow. So, um, do hope you've liked the series so far. Um, I'll be coming back to you uh, in a couple of weeks now with the rest of the, the, the parts. Um, it's probably about another seven. Um, which head over to Pamplona and then over to the west coast of Spain. Um, unfortunately, I haven't uh, any more. Uh, SD cards full of footage, so I'm going to have to use Ian's um, footage from his bike uh, that you see in front of us right now. Um, uh, he's got the rest of it, so we'll uh, let it out and get it over to you uh, as soon as possible. Um, hope you've liked the, uh, the trip so far, and um, yeah, keep watching. Pamplona, 113 kilometers.